and you're not letting on every single time off camera. I can't believe you've got that in at 20 to 1. I can't believe it. Just, just let them know. All right, all, and welcome back to a new video on the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to be looking back at the racing this weekend. Obviously, some very informative cards at Newbury, Nace, and Punchestown. And, of course, we're going to be looking forward, as part of our Cheltenham Festival previews, to the Novice Hurdle. So we're going to be looking at the Supreme, the Ballymore, and the Albert Bartlett, all in depth, and potentially a few lurkers in those divisions that may go to handicaps. But, Josh, another brilliant brilliant weekend of action uh, fantastic to see some of these horses out and it's really ramping up five weeks to go I know I think it says a lot that we're spending Valentine's Day evening talking about the Cheltenham Festival I'm really looking forward to, to talking about the novice hurdles they look interesting we've learned plenty actually today about where some of the big horses from Gordon Elliott's yard might be running and there was good racing at the weekend maybe not too many Cheltenham clues um, but we definitely learned plenty about the likes of Brave Man's Game Journey with me as well uh, and we are also going to answer a few of your questions at the end as well so stick around for that but in the meantime of the last four videos we've had 48,000 views combined it's bonkers absolutely bonkers thank you ever so much and if you do enjoy the videos please hit that like button get your thoughts down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also the Let's Talk Racing caps are all sold out thank you very much for your patience with those i will be sending them out at the end of this week so you should get them either over the weekend or early next week uh, i do apologize for that i'm actually going to prague tomorrow for my dad's 50th birthday decent recommendations get them down below but we do have plenty of good racing to get stuck into actually we'll start on wednesday at fairy house because they probably weren't high profile runners but you had quite an interest especially looking towards the Cheltenham festival you had smoking gun who you've put up for the Kim Muir, and you also had HMS Seahorse, who you put up for the Boodles. What was your thoughts on how they ran? Yeah, it, it was really encouraging runs. I thought Smoking Gun didn't really want to see him go and win and blow a handicap mark, and he didn't. He ran a good race, though, in third, and the right horses in front of him in full-time score and Discorama. I suppose you're a little bit up in the air whether he's going to go and run in the Kim Muir. I think he'd have a great chance if he did. There is a small chance he might be kept for an Irish national, perhaps, uh, around Fairy House because he obviously won over that course and distance in the Porter Sound. But I was happy with him and he has come down in price. I think I put him up at 25s. And I was really pleased with HMS Seahorse. I thought he won really snug at the line. It was quite clear, let's win, but let's not win by that much. And I just think sometimes in these races, the, the slightly more fashionable trainers, the Gordon Elliott's, the Joe Slow Bryan's, can sometimes get a bit of a slap on the wrist from the British handicapper. And the likes of a Paul Nolan trained horse might slip in a little bit more under the radar. And if this horse gets a good weight, I think he's got a proper chance. Uh, he's, got some, he's got the right form in with the likes of Pied Piper and Vauban. The tide turns. He's now gone and won a race. I think he's got a really nice chance. He's 12 to 1. I still think that's a pretty good bet. I was reading the Gordon Elliott Cheltenham Festival stable tour, and he was talking about Grom Parody being a Kim Muir horse. Surely there's no way he can get him in under 145. But we were saying that when he won the grade two novice hurdle at the back end of last season, we thought he could be a gold cup horse down the line. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he's waved his magic wand to get this horse potentially into the Kim Muir. I don't know how he's managed it. Now, this horse, I, I suppose, his jumping has left a, been a bit to be desired, but I do remember a certain chosen mate having very much uh, jumping issues coming up to the Grand Daniel, and he suddenly jumped like an absolute buck around Cheltenham and won uh, very easily. So, it's been done before, and I'm sure with Gordon's ammunition this year, it will be done again. Focus on the weekend over at Nace as well we had Journey With Me who's almost joint favourite for the Ballymore and we had Ellie May. did we learn anything other than she's kind of back to near her best no we, we didn't really it was a race she should have won she went out in front I think the one good thing that you could garner from uh, on Saturday at Nace was she jumped a lot slicker than she did at Fairy House behind Mount Ida they put the cheek pieces on it seemed to sharpen her up a bit uh, look, she's got a chance in, in the mare's chase. I'd be very surprised if she was out of the frame in the mare's chase. She may be vulnerable to the likes of a concertista, potentially, uh, but she's a very honest horse. The thing I don't like about Ellie May is some people are question her attitude, which I just think is absolutely bizarre. I think she's as game as they get, as true as they come, and I, I think she'll surely run a good race at Cheltenham. Whether she'll win or not leaves maybe a bit to be desired, but good to see her back winning. With regards to Journey With Me, 
Is he quick enough to win the Ballymore? I think he, he could well be caught out. Look, this is a horse, and, and you'll know, Josh, he just hasn't been one that I've warmed to this year. And I think, obviously, he did it quite well on the weekend, given the circumstances. But what a mess of a race it was. Um, and, like, I know some people are trying to, uh, you know, correlate the form because O'Toole was miles back. If you think that's the best O'Toole can provide... I, I, I don't think you know that much about racing, to be honest. He was by far below his best. Doesn't really look like he's shown much enthusiasm for jumping at the moment, which is a big shame. Look, Journey With Me, he has his fans. I think he's a very good horse, but I, I think really he's a three-mile chaser next year, and I would be very surprised if he won the Ballymore this year. It's good that he's won the race in those conditions, but I just I didn't go, that's the Ballymore winner. I just don't think he got the speed. And I've kind of flip-flapped with that all season. At the start, I said he's, he's not quick enough for it. And then after his run at Pun- uh, Leopardstown, when he beat Kilcrook, when he beat Manila Crooner, I thought, oh, he might, he might have more speed than I gave him credit for. I'm just not sure he does. I'm, 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 I can't see him winning the Ballymore personally. Newbury on Saturday, plenty of other clues. And it was fair play to Paul Nichols. He ran Brave Man's Game in the three-mile novice handicap chase, giving £16 to two very decent rivals. I think they're both rated 143 and probably progressing as well. He jumped very well. He's a very exuberant jumper for a big horse, and that might catch him out at Cheltenham, I'm not so sure. Is he a real threat to the likes of a Galapanda champ? I think he is. He, his form would, would indicate he will be. I think he'll run a very good race at Cheltenham. Uh, I still have my reservations about him over three miles at Cheltenham, personally. I just... The the only thing I always don't like about Brave Man's game, I think he's a most wonderful horse to watch. It's the last hundred yards. It's suddenly like he's suddenly treading water. I don't think Harry Cobden does this on, on some of these good horses. He, he's done it on surname before, and he's travelling on the steel, and you think that there's an awful lot under the bonnet. And I'm not sure there's that much there. Now, that could get him to beat a lot of horses, as it has done already this year. Uh, but maybe if there's a stronger stare in, in the um, Brown Advisory, he's going to be maybe found out. But good, as you say, good to see. I, I think Paul Nichols, you know, he must be in a situation where he feels he can't win. People have been giving out for the last number of years that none of these good horses are carrying top weight in a handicap. He suddenly declares this horse, oh, jeez, what are you doing, you know, carrying top weight in a handicap with a, a poor young novice, you know? So th- there's no winning with these, with some people, but it was a good performance, especially given the stable form, and, and as you say, his jumping is a sight to behold, really. Yeah, I think Brave Man's game is definitely a better chaser than he was a hurdler. That being said... I think he's going to come up short to Gallop under Champ if he runs in that race. And if I owned him, as much as there is that temptation to run at Cheltenham, you want a Cheltenham Festival winner, I think I would be bypassing Cheltenham. I probably would go to Aintree and I would focus on the King George. Because if you win the King George, then you can go back to Cheltenham and go in the Gold Cup. My thing with, with, with Brave Man's game is I can't help but go back to the Ballymore last year when Bob Ollinger swept him off his feet it was breathtaking and I thought well afterwards it sounded to me like Harry Cobden thought that was almost the best that Brave Man's game could give at that time we've got some questions later but we're going to go and answer one now and it's from Daniel Hurley he says do you think the English horses like Brave Man's game and Lahom Press are being overlooked in the market maybe because they're not Irish trained my personal opinion I don't think they are I look at Brave Man's game and, and I actually look at the dipper which Lahom Press won and I said, if Brave Man's Game is going to run in this race, would I bat Brave Man's Game to beat Lahom Press? I think I would, over those conditions. Two and a half miles around Cheltenham, over fences. I think I would back Brave Man's Game to beat him. And then i go, will Bob Ollinger beat Brave Man's Game over two and a half miles at Cheltenham in March by 17 lengths? For me, Bob Ollinger will run the two and a half mile race, will have too much speed for Lahom Press. And all he's got to do is put in an adequate round of jumping and I think he'll win. And Gallop under Champa just thinks he's got more talent and more ability and jumps better. So I hope they go to three miles with him. So that's my verdict on Brave Man's game. That being said, I think if he'd ran against Eldorado Allen in the Denman chase, I think Brave Man's game 
would would have won. It wasn't a race that filled me with much enthusiasm, especially going forward. No, it didn't. Uh, probably exposed Royal Pagai's lack of of pace in those sort of instances. It, it seems like he really just needs heavy ground, and he probably needs Haydock as well. He's turning into a little bit of a Bristol Demai, really. And and you're looking for him from a Grade One purpose. You know, are you going to rock up next November? And hopefully, it'd be heavy ground for the Betfair Chase, and he'd have a sniff. Uh, no, it wasn't a race I'd be just leaping up and down about. Clan de Zobo ran a little bit like some of Nichols have been and just ran a bit below par. And El Dorado Allen, look, he's a he's a grand horse for connections and you, you'd love to own him and all, but uh, I see they're now chucking him into the Gold Cup picture. I think he'd want to be starting sooner rather than later if he's to have any chance in that. Completely agree. Funambul Savola won the game Spirit. It's a shame that editor de Gilles didn't run. I quite fancied him for the race. Um, but... Is he now in a champion chase picture because he's going to be too high to go to the Grand Annual, surely? But he does. He's going to have probably 10, 15 pounds to find on the likes of Shishkin. He's in a rock and a hard place. You probably do have to go to the champion chase. Could he maybe come fourth or fifth? Perhaps. Uh, I did look at the race, though, and I kind of went to... Obviously, the top two dogs would have won that race at Newbury. Shakan would have won the race. I think Newbury Negro would have won the race pretty easily as well. Um... I like the horse. I really like Charlie Deutsch. I think he's a magnificent rider, especially over fences. He gets his these Venetia horses jumping so, so well. Um, so I, I don't want to discredit the performance, and so Roy is a good yardstick, but he certainly has plenty to find come a champion chase. Edward Stone, Arkle. He beat third time lucky at Warwick. Is he now right to be at the head of the market for the Arkle? This is going to sound probably strange coming from me, but I think he is right to be at the top of the market based off what he's actually done this year. Uh, I think this is one of the very few races that I'm just not inspired really by the Irish contingent in it. I was hoping for a bit better from Blue Lord. I think Riviere de Tell's got slight Fakir Dudere syndrome and is likely to run well but run into something. Uh, they're going, you know, does St. Sam then have a chance? Is Blue Lord going to improve? Maybe that's the case. But Edward Stone, he keeps doing everything they ask of him. Alan King's horses weren't in great nick uh, going into this weekend, and the horse is still hacked up. Unfortunately, your your best friend, third time lucky again, slightly exposed at this level. Uh, I would, I, I must confess, and I know it's not all about Cheltenham, but do you not think if third time lucky was being trained by the likes of a Gordon Elliott, that he'd be off some sort of stitch-up mark for the Grand Annual come Cheltenham. Uh, and, and it might have meant that they didn't win that much throughout the season, but they'd have a real chance at the Cheltenham Festival, because he, unfortunately, is too high for the Grand Annual, not good enough to win the Arkle. All you've got to do is go back to October and November, whenever it was, and look eight lengths behind him. There's your Grand Annual winner, Buddy Rich Gordon <laughs> Elliott. He will win the Grand Annual, I'm sure. If you've told me... Three weeks ago, Blue Lord and Edward Stone would have both won and both be 3-1 to one for the Arkle. I think I'd definitely be backing Blue Lord. Copper Cove, I did just quickly want to mention, won the Exeter bumper. Put him up a couple of weeks ago for the best bets. He didn't run. Ran at Exeter. He's a nice horse going forward, especially over two and a half miles. I think he'd be a, a smashing chaser. But the main topic on this video will be the novice herders. We're going to preview the Supreme, the Ballymore and the Albert Bartlett as well as look at some horses that might not be good enough to feature in the likes of those big grade ones and could be going for a Martin Pipe or County Hurdle. Supreme novice hurdle we'll start with. Constitution 9 to 4, Sir Gerhard 4 to 1, Dysart Dynamo 4 to 1, John Bon 11 to 2, Kilcrut 12 to 1. What a race if all four of these turn up. What a race. Highly unlikely. I think both Henderson's will, one of uh, Willie's will. At the prices, currently right now, who would you be backing? Well, I, I think I'd be backing whichever one of Willie's is there, really. Uh, I, as you say, I don't think I'd be... Um, I, I don't think the two of them are going to run because he obviously does have Kill Crush, so he's got two in the race. Uh, one way or another, and he might even run something like a state man or El Fabiolo as well. So he doesn't really need the runners... Uh, I just think that the form of these two horses, I thought Sir Gerard was incredibly impressive at Leopardstown being three stripe life despite not jumping very well and I think Dysart Dynamo is just a complete enigma. I think he's one of the most talented horses we've seen in a long, long time. Now he has a, I, I, he might almost be too immature for Cheltenham this year but I still think he, he's an absolute weapon. In terms of the two Henderson horses, Constitution Hill form of the Talworth, I just don't like it. 
it was obviously let down by Jetual, who ran far too bad to be true in the Betfair. So you can't really base it off that. But the Talworth isn't exactly just screaming out to you as your supreme trial. And John Bon, I must say, you know, you're getting 9 to 4 Constitution Hill, 11 to 2 John Bon. I'd only be back in one of those two at those prices, and it would be John Bon. I think he's achieved more uh, in terms of what he's done over hurdles, and I still think there's, there's more to come from him off a fast pace. Uh, so it is hard. It's a it's a race that's going to continually boggle the mind. I don't think we'll know with the Mullins duo until I'd say the the Friday before Cheltenham starts. Uh, but I would certainly be favouring that camp probably. And out of the Henderson duo, it would be John Bon over Constitution Hill. So I would be, you know, I suppose people are backers and layers. At this moment in time, I'd be laying Constitution Hill at nine to four. I've massively gone off John Bon controversial I've been a fan all season I look at the race and I just simply can't work it out I cannot work it out if Dysart Dynamo runs in the race they're going to go hell for leather at the front John Bond will probably sit just off I'd imagine Constitution Hill will be a few lengths behind those and will, we will be produced late I think they're going to go that quick that it could suit a Constitution Hill if he travels but Constitution Hill has to jump really well coming to the last if they're all alongside each other I think Constitution would beat Dysart Dynamo and John Bond. But if Sir Gerhard runs, extra complication. Tries to work it out over the last week. I've spent so much time thinking about it. And I just can't, especially with the pace angle. If Sir Gerhard runs, I think I'd probably side with him. But I don't think I'd side with Dysart Dynamo if he ran. To be fair to John Bond, the one thing that, that I said this season is he could boil over at any point. And so far on the race course, that's not happened. He has been fairly professional. 80,000 people at Cheltenham is a completely different ball game to 10,000, 5,000 at Haydock. Like I've said, everything he's done on the track has been spot on, but that Newbury Gallops morning has stayed in my mind and I can't let go of that, especially a massive occasion like this, which is why I've slightly gone off him. I think one thing that's important to note is I had a conversation with Daryl Jacob in the week and, and he was at the RTV studios and I said, look, Daryl, where is El Fabiolo going to run? And he said straight away, Supreme. He thinks that El Fabiola is going to go straight to the Supreme. All it was the other day when he was a non-runner was just a slight cut when he got off the lorry. Let's focus then to the Ballymore. 11 to 4, Sir Gerhard. He's shorter for this race than he is the Supreme. Journey with me, 5 to 1. Dysart Dynamo, 5 to 1. Gordon Elliott confirmed today that he's thinking Ginto for the Ballymore over the Bartlett. Stage star, straight to the ba Ballymore, 9 to 1. Walking on air, probably runs this weekend at Ascot. He's 10 to 1. And it is interesting that Gordon's thinking Ginto this race i know you're a massive fan of him yeah well i, I think he's a lovely horse skin so as you say it really depends who he's up against in this uh because as you say sir gerard's the the main fly in the ointment and i suppose if, if sir gerard's not in the race the chances are the dice are dynamos in the race which is again uh, you're saying it, it's going to be potentially difficult to keep a lid on dice or dynamo over two miles i wouldn't know what he'd do in the Ballymore. uh personally speaking i think if sir gerard was in the Ballymore, he'd be one of the bets of the week I don't see any circumstance how he gets beat in this race. Because if I'm being honest, it's not. I think it's a it's a close race. I think it's a tight race. It's not a race that does much for me. I don't think this is a vintage Ballymore by any stretch. Journey with me is almost there on reputation more than what he's actually done. The two at the top of the market, it's flip flopping depending on who runs out of the Mullins duo. Ginto's the type of horse. I think he'll run very well. I think he could run like the way Next Destination ran in the race a number of years ago and kind of runs on to be second or third, might win the grade one three mile at punch us down uh, and, and go up and, and maybe be a, an RSA or a brand advisory horse next year. And then the ones, you know, stage star, very similar profile to Brave Man's Game last year. Don't think he's as good though. Walking on air, we've only seen him once. Big ask if he's to go straight. Three stripe life, a horse I like a lot. He could be one to run into the frame if he ran in this race. Uh, but certainly the all on which one runs of Sir Gerhard or Dysart Dynamo because they've both got the uh, potential to blow the race open. And I think if Sir Gerhard ran in this, he'd be one of my best two or three bets of the whole week. Yeah, I agree. I think Sir Gerhard, if he runs here, I struggle to see how he's going to be beaten, which is why I put him up at 4-1 to one last week for the race. Uh, Ginto... He, he's going to be a three-mile chaser for next year. So is Journey with me. Don't think he's got the speed to beat something like a Sigurhard or a Dysart Dynamo. Let's say both Mullins horses run in the Supreme. 
I'd be all over three strap life. I think he'd have too much toe and I do think he'd stay as well. The Albert Bartlett, tricky race, very tricky race, but you've got a massive fancy and I think I'm part of the team as well. Well, I am part of the team now. I, I, I had a, a couple of coppers on him this week. 20 to 1, Barden's town lad. How is he still 20 to 1? Surely, surely the, the, the people are rolling in it after watching the podcast over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't know why, because everyone that's responding as well seems to have backed him as well. So I don't know how this horse isn't 2 to 1 fab at this stage, but let's call a spade a shovel here. He's a very slow horse, but uh, I think the, the race just. Again, it's not one that fills me with an awful lot of confidence. Ginto's at the top of the market, won't run. Journey with me, top of the market, won't run. Manella Crooner, very wise guy horse at this stage, screams Fakira to me. He's slow, his jumping is poor, ran on in, in that Nathaniel Lacey race. I, if I'm, I'm being brutally honest, I thought it was a crap race, the Nathaniel Lacey race. I, I really thought it was average form. I thought Danny Mullins gave the winner, Manella Kakuna, a brilliant ride, nicked up from the front. The rest of them were so so. Uh, Hollow Games, he's now been found out twice in Grade 1 company. Is he not just up to us? Jerry Kalam's jumping leaves a little bit to be desired. Also, he's quite inexperienced. And you get down to Bardenstown, lad. He's got form at the course. He stays all day. He is slow. He'll be off the bridle coming down the hill. That's one of life's great certainties. This horse will be pumped along. Maybe Sean Bowen on him, Simon Torrance, pumping the guns on him. But you know he's going to be there. And if he's anywhere close, if he's within two lengths or three lengths of the leader at the final flight, I think he'll win the ba- he'll win the Bartlett. And if he wins, geez, I might have to retire because I've put him up at 50 to 1. If Bardenstown Lad isn't off the bridle coming down the hill, the race has been ran very false. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> false. Uh, they've ran it like a four-mile national hunt chase because there's no way that he's not off the bridle in a championship race at the festival. What about the nice guy? Has he got a squeak or is this that one run over hurdles? For some reason, that doesn't scream Bartlett horse to me at all. No, it doesn't. He's a really li- likeable horse, though. Uh, if he ran, look, he'd have a, maybe a squeak. Alaho went to this race, I think, with only... One start over hurdles. One race that is very interesting, and I'm going to talk about it later on as well. Uh, there's a grade three, three-mile novice hurdle at Clonmel this week on Thursday. Just an interesting race. Alaho beat Manella Indo in the race three years ago, I think, and they ended up coming first and third in the Bartlett. And there's just one in there, because I know I've put them up before, uh, Nolan's horse, Daily Present. I don't know. I think they're a little bit sceptical because he's another young horse. If he was to go and run very well, potentially win at Clonmel on Thursday, I'm sure he'll run. He's 33 to 1 non-runner, no bet. Might be worth just a couple of quid non-runner, no bet before Thursday. Because if he does win or, or does run very well, he'd probably be half that price and is a more likely runner. So he's something at a mad price to maybe keep yourself interested in. But like... I just, every time, now maybe this is me just convincing myself over and over again, but when I talk about Bardenstown Lad's case for this race, I keep thinking he should be an 8, 10 to 1 shot, and you're still getting 20 to 1. It's a cracking price. Obviously, the trainer isn't the most fashionable trainer with regards to Cheltenham Festival winners, and he is a big, slow boat, and he probably doesn't have the flashiness of Manella Karuna, who's been running in grade ones and, and stuff like that. So I can see why he is a big price. Might be slightly overlooked. He's, he's the type of horse I can see winning a Bartlett, but never kicking on. Never being yeah. a graded novice chaser down the line. I spoke to uh, someone at Cheveley Park, and they said that the classic getaway, the very expensive purchase, 570 grand. This would probably be more likely than the Ballymore. He might be a horse of the future, and he might not go to Cheltenham. So that's one worth noting. Jotted down a few horses that might not make the, the creme de la creme, they might not be top tier, but that could be of interest in something like a Martin Pipe or a County Hurdle. I'm going to quickly flick through mine. Deploy the getaway, Martin Pipe. He's got an Irish rating of 136. Connections are thinking of the Martin Pipe with him. And it's hard to imagine that the English handicap is going to give him more than six pounds. So that would probably give him 141, 142. So he'd definitely get in the race. And he could be well handicapped as well. Ran very well the other day. Classic getaway, as we said. He probably will get a Martin Pipe entry. But he'll need to run in the Michael Purcell um, before Cheltenham to get qualified. My mate Mozzie has been spoken about the county hurdle. Mr. Fred Rogers, maybe a Martin Pipe. 
Chemical Energy is definitely going to go for the Martin Pipe. Gordon Elliott said that this week. Far out. I know they were thinking Martin Pipe at the start of the season. He's ran very well in some of the top grade one two mile races uh, over this the course of the season, especially the Royal Bond. Any harm in asking for John Joe O'Neill? I think they think this horse is going to be better. Um, over two and a half miles. No idea how they managed to get him beat on his first three starts. You might be able to work that one out. He beat Constitution Hill in a point to point. How how did he get beat in his first three starts? I will never know. No, I, I agree with you on plenty of them. I think, as you say, interesting jockey booking, having Richie Deegan on stake, man. I think that Martin Pipe look... You know, I know it's simple to say, but you've got to look out for jockey bookings. Jordan Gainford's going to ride probably the number one for, for Gordon. Jack Foley, Richie Deegan for Willie Mullins. These are all conditional jocks to keep the right side of. So any of those. I thought there was one, and I, I would be very rare that I'd fly the flag for an English horse in these handicaps. But I just thought I saw um, Chris Gordon's horse, Auk and Risk has got a fairly favourable weight. I think he's a really likeable horse. If he ran in a county herd, he's got a bit of track experience with the bumpers. He's been really good the last two times. Horse he beat, uh, two starts back, has won twice since. I think he's a really good horse, actually, and he's in, I think, of 128 at the moment. Might be touch and go whether to get into a county hurdle off that or not. But if he was to rock up in a county hurdle, I'd give him a bit of a squeak. And uh, I, I just think he's a, he's a likeable horse. And given connections, he's always going to be a bigger price than maybe he should be. I think that's a fair case there. I also wanted to mention IA Connects for the McNeil family and Gordon Elliott. I think they're going to go boys race with him. So Martin Pipe would be on the agenda. I've also got an update on On Baton, who was a National Hunt chase chance. Unlikely we're going to see him again this season. I think that... Something went horribly wrong the other day when Statler won at Nace and it just was not his showing at all. I think they're going to give him a break and Ombaton most likely out for the season. Now let's answer a few questions before we go into our best bets for this weekend. We've not forgot about the racing. One is from JR Racing, or J Racing, sorry I can't read. Uh, he says, the Willie Mullins camp seem to be overly keen on appreciate its chances in the champion hurdle compared to what they're like with other horses that they're usually quite quiet about. Do you think he'll turn up and do you think he could really put a threat to honeysuckle? I think the vibes are now that he will turn up, which is great. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with, with those vibes. Uh, so it still wouldn't surprise me, obviously, with Willie Mullins if we get a, a news bulletin a week or two out from Cheltenham saying that he'll miss us. But uh, look, appreciate it. If he was to return in the, in the form he was in, in the Supreme, I think he's got a massive chance, to be honest. Um, I think he's a super horse. I think he's one of the better horses we've seen in recent times. The problem is you're running a champion hurdle fresh. And that's some ask uh, to come back, you know, 12 months on having won a, a below par supreme and, and, and to go and win the race. I think it's unlikely. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he ran a cracking race, maybe came second or third, and maybe could build on that and have a good go at Honeysuckle and punch us down. Uh, but... Hard to see how he beats Honeysuckle, giving her seven pounds first start of the season. You can't tell me that's ideal prep. That's the key point, giving her seven pounds. If he can beat her and she runs to merit, giving her seven pounds in any circumstance, let alone on his first start of the season, having had a year off practically, he would be some horse. I, I think the bullishness is, I would imagine he's probably working the house down. From what it sounded like to me, they didn't want to run in the red mills because it might just knock off that freshness and they might need that come chelt them. I'm not sure. I think it's a massive ask. Another question, this one from Sam. He says, do you think Concertista has any chance of reverting back to hurdles rather running in the mayor's chase? Straight answer, I think there's no chance. I think she'll definitely run the mayor's chase. Willie said that. She's gone chasing this year. There'll be no point to go chasing if they're going to just revert back to hurdles. I know she's quite low, but she's not made any errors over, over fences, really. Uh, and I see no reason why she wouldn't go to the mayor's chase. Is that fair? Yep, very fair. I'd say Stormy Ireland fly, flying the flag for Mullins in the, in the mayor's hurdle. Burning victory as well. She could go there. Uh, Chan asks, please can we get your handicap nap right now of the Cheltenham Festival? Massive question. Yeah, bloody tough question as well, I must confess. But uh, look, uh, based off what, what I said earlier on in the episode as well, I think HMSC horse has a, has a massive chance. You could give 
a massive chance to, I'd say, 20 horses in the Poodles right now. I saw Brazil has now gone into favouritism, having won at Nace. He may have blown his handicap mark with that run. I know your horse has got a good chance, Champion Green. Gordon's probably got two or three in there. But with the likelihood of HMSC horse being kind of fairly down the way, so I still think there's a bit more improvement to come from him, and I think it was probably the plan to win Snug uh, last Wednesday. It's been the plan ever since his first run to run in the, in the Boodles, so... Uh, he'd be for me 12 to 1 and uh, if, if Paul Nolan wins the second last race of the day on day one and we all know that Fred's winning the last race of the day on day one it will be some evening in the feathered fish I'll tell you that for no charge it will that being said that's not your nap handicap nap at the Cheltenham Festival you can be honest with the people you can be honest you've been honest with me I know there is a certain two mile novice chaser that you love <laughs> And you're not letting on every single time off camera. I can't believe you've got that in at 20 to 1. I can't believe it. Just just let them know. It was because I'd said to the people after the October meeting, oh, this is a very interesting... I think he was 25 to 1 at the time. And then you've nicked it from underneath my eyes. I'm just staring at him, knowing that he's probably going to win the race. And I just didn't put him up because it was early in the season. Didn't want to put a grand annual horse up in November time and here you come charging in in January you're like Tony McCoy and Witchet alignment and I've just been nutted on the line <laughs> home and hosed and then nutted but uh, you can take it away with the most likely handicap winner of the week Buddy Rich Grand Daniel Gordon Elliott said one dart at the race when Gordon Elliott says that he usually thinks he's got a good one you'd imagine Dave would be on could be a chosen mate 2.0 and I'd be very confident with him he would be my at this stage, nap of the Cheltenham Festival, let alone handicaps at 10 to 1. You can see the pain in Andrew's eyes. He agrees. He agrees even more than me. He knows yeah. this horse is going to win, hopefully. But we are going to focus then on a few best bets for this weekend. Apologies that we didn't get them for, for last weekend. There won't be a video on Thursday because I am away. But after then, a couple of videos a week, we will not be letting the side down. So my first best bet would be Grivitana for Paul Nichols. And you may not have heard of her, but she's making her hurdling debut for Paul Nichols over at uh, Wincanton in the 138 on Saturday. She's got a lofty reputation in France, won a race by 12 lengths on debut, now makes a debut for Paul Nichols. I think they think a lot of her and she should go well, but she could be very short, I'd imagine. So Grivitana is one. The Russian Doyen over at Newbury in the 340 on Sunday. Horse I like a lot, think he's well handicapped, and I think this type of race would suit him down to a T. He was very unlucky over course and distance not so long ago. So I think the Russian Doyen could go one better and win at Newbury on Sunday. And then my other one, who has been priced up in the JP Silks, musical slave for Philip Hobbs, 12 to 1 in the 225 at Ascot. Has always threatened to win a race like this. Was third in this race actually last year. I think that he could go well and, and 12 to 1 each way might not be the worst bet in the world. So musical slave, the Russian Doyen, and Grivitana. Yeah, and for me, just the two. Uh, one on Thursday, as I was mentioning earlier, this grade three novice hurdle at Clonmel. I'm going to put up Daily Present. I think he's a really nice horse. He was the best bet of mine around a month ago, and he did win. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the strongest race in the world, to be honest. I don't think the likes of Mullins and Elliot are going to use it as a, a prep for any of their great stars. And my one being from Saturday, uh, it's a little bit like you, Josh, with your right place, right time uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's in two races. He's in the Grand national trial at Haydock and the three mile handicap chase at Ascot and it's Fortescue for Henry Daly he's run some really nice races this year I would hope he's running at Haydock because I think three and a half miles heavy ground right up his alley he's 14 to 1 for that race I think he's 12 to 1 for the Ascot three miler I back him for either but I would favour him running in the 240 at Haydock so Fortescue Henry Daly hopefully they'll get Richard Patrick claiming a few pounds off him as well there we go. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel. Like we say, thank you ever so much for all the support on the recent videos. It is mind-boggling. If you told us a year ago when we made the channel that it would be at this stage now, I wouldn't have believed you. Thank you ever so much. And thank you very much for all those that bought the caps. They will be sent out to you soon. And your QR code for that private preview, preview link will be included as well. Uh, so do not fret if they haven't come already. And we'll see you soon.